everyone welcome back to my channel today i wanted to talk to you about bugs and whether or not you can get bugs in the air garden i've been growing with these hydroponic units i have a couple behind me and a couple in the other room um, for about four years now and up until last week i would have told you that i had never had a bug problem um, obviously it's not foolproof but um, it is a much less likelihood to get bugs when you're growing in hydroponics um, and that's kind of what attracted me to hydro in the first place I really hate bugs. I have such a paranoid fear about bugs. And the reason for that is most bugs and most pests come from the soil. So when you're growing in water, then you're eliminating the main source of the problem. Um, doesn't mean you eliminate the problem entirely, but it is just a much less likelihood of getting bugs and just creepy crawlies when you eliminate soil. So if you wanna prevent bugs, um, I would recommend not having not mixing outside plants and indoor plants. Um, so don't, if you have an outside garden, don't bring in your plants to overwinter them. Um, some plants like pepper plants can last for many, many years. So people will bring them, grow them outside and then once it starts to get cold, they'll bring it indoors and just kind of keep it alive in the winter inside the house. Um, I would not recommend doing that if bugs are a concern. They can hide underneath the leaves, in the soil, like in the just nooks and crannies of the plant. And the bugs are so small that it's very difficult to see them with the naked eye. So you're better off just keeping them, you know, outside in the garage or like if you have a greenhouse, keep them in the greenhouse. Um, the other thing is I do not have house plants. I do not buy plants outside. I don't even buy flowers when I have the air gardens running um, because a lot of times bugs are in um, outside plants. Like even if you see it at the grocery store or in the garden center, um, it's kind of likely that they will have bugs. I also don't wear shoes in the house or outside clothes in the house, um, so I'm pretty paranoid about bugs as you can see, and when I get home I change my clothes. Um, I live in the city, it's very dirty, it's very grimy. If I sit on the subway I'm not also sitting on my couch in the same, you know, pants and top. Another tip I have is to be careful of your growing medium. So with Aero Gardens I do start everything from seed, um, I've, I also do use the Aero Garden um, seed kits, and those generally tend to be fine, I've never had an issue with those. but there are some companies that will ship um, baby seedlings in something in soil or in like cocoa core or some kind of growing medium and you just want to be extra careful about buying seedlings outside. I think it's best to start them yourself from seed in something like a sponge and to make sure that you sanitize the sponges. So there's a lot of different kinds. There's like rock wool, there's um, like uh, spark plugs or um, cocoa core, like there's all different types of growing mediums and a lot of times those are just sitting in a warehouse um, and you don't know how clean the warehouse is, it's likely very dirty and it may have been sitting there for months or years and bugs can get in that way. So before you plant something with it, um, just sanitize it. You can boil it, you can um, heat it up like on really high heat in the microwave uh, or you can just, you know, sanitize it another way. And then also obviously the less plants you grow, the easier everything is to maintain. Um, so the first three years of growing with hydroponics, I just had one unit and it was very easy to stay on top of things. Now I have like six, maybe seven, so it's gotten just a lot more difficult to stay on top of garden maintenance. Um, so I would recommend if you are wary of bugs to keep it as small and neat and tidy as possible. And ideally to check on your plants every morning, that way you can stay t on top of um, maintenance and just if you'll you'll kind of see the bugs before the infestation happens at full force so um, at least that's what happened with me I noticed one or two aphids and I just I think I just didn't really want to believe that I had a problem so I saw one I, I killed it obviously and then I thought it was fine I saw another one two days later killed it thought it was fine um, cleaned some of my plants but not all of them and I think when you see a problem the first time you want to be a little bit more aggressive about it also if you're concerned about bugs um, stick to plants that aphids don't like as much. Um, so aphids are attracted to stuff like hot peppers, to like leafy greens, salad greens, Swiss chard. Uh, and I've grown a lot of peppers and Swiss chard right now, so I think that was part of the problem. Um, they are not attracted to tomatoes. So if you like tomatoes and you don't like bugs, grow a lot of tomatoes. Even following all of those things, I did obviously get a bug problem. And I personally think they came in through the window, um, so I will not be opening my windows anymore, um, at least in the same room that my air gardens are. And then if you do have an aphid problem, um, here are some ways that you can get rid of them. So I woke up on Saturday morning, went to check on my plants, and I found that they had this weird sticky residue. There was aphids all over it, and I didn't even realize it at first because the bugs are super small. They're very, very tiny, and they look like little white 
um, dust or dandruff like all over your plants. What I did notice was my plants were really sticky. So basically aphids like to feed on the sap inside the plants and they I don't know if they secrete some kind of stickiness or it's the sap from the plant coming out but it's basically called honeydew and it's a like disgustingly sticky sap that will just cover not only the leaves the stems but the base of the air garden um, they were all over my like electrical socket and the plug it was quite disgusting so let's say you discover aphids in your home what do you do so there's a couple different ways to treat aphids. The most common is to use like products, so diatomaceous earth or insecticide sprays both work and they're very popular to use outside. Um, diatomaceous earth is like a, like a powder that you would sprinkle around the soil and all over the plant and it basically is kind of like a sharp gravelly texture to the aphids um, that tears their bodies apart from the inside out when they walk over it. Aphids are soft-bodied creatures, so you know you could squash them with your hands. You can use sticky tape and like sticky tape the leaves and squash them that way. Although that's very time-consuming, um, you can also spray neem oil. Uh, oil. I think soap and like neem oil basically suffocates their bodies because they do have that soft shell. So basically, that's how you're getting rid of them. I will link a couple sprays down below if you want to get a bottle and like have it on hand. You basically have to soak the plant. You want to cover the entire plant in the spray, underside the leaves, the stems, the, you know, the machine itself, like you want to coat the plants so that it's dripping wet. So what I did was I started um, immediately removing the parts of the plant that I saw the bugs on and the, the plants were covered in these bugs. So I did end up trashing four plants and keeping the rest. Um, and it was, it was kind of sad to get rid of the plants because some of these I have been growing for like six months now. Um, but basically I had a couple of pepper plants that had never produced peppers and I was starting to kind of give up on them anyway. So those I just straight up threw out. Um, I basically started cutting off the, the parts of the plant that had the biggest concentration of bugs and just removing all the leaves because they kind of hang out by the leaves. They lay their eggs underneath the leaves. Um, so I started removing like 99% of the leaves and I, anything you do remove, like I would double bag it and you know tie it up so that they can't run wild in your trash. Um, I live in a, in a building with other people, so I also didn't want you know the bugs to just go from my apartment to like all of the rest of them. My Korean pepper plant had the worst infestation. The whole plant was like sticky and sappy and nasty. So I cut off um, a lot of the branches and the leaves and then any of the peppers that I harvested, I soaked them in a bowl of soapy water. And then after I cut off the pl a large portion of the plant, um, I dunked the plant in uh, soapy water. So I took the machine apart, scrubbed the, you know, the base, the grow bowl of the farm, and um, I then filled it up with hot soapy water and dunked the plants in. And then I put like a, like a weight on top, like a bowl to completely submerge the plants in that soapy water. Basically soap kills them, so whether it's neem oil, um, dish soap, uh, soap is harmful and you can spray them, but I think the best solution is to fully, fully dunk your plants and submerge them. Um, you probably only need to submerge it for five to ten minutes. I soaked them for like an hour. Um, the thing is, soap is also harmful to your plants. It tends to dry out the plants and, you know, just causes some stress. So. Do want to be aware of that. Um, I then took apart all of my other farms, scrubbed the the deck, and also individually soaked every plant as well. And I'm I fully fully submerged it. So the roots, the pod, the leaves, um, especially the undersides of the leaves and any fruit that was on there, um, the flowers, like everything. If I could, I tried to leave peppers on the plants, but sometimes they were so overgrown that I had to cut off the branches and then. Those peppers I also soaked in a bowl of hot, hot soapy water. That's what I did and you'll see the difference between the before and after. Um, it definitely did set my plants back a lot. Um, cut off all the leaves. They were really just infested all over. They're super sticky. I tried to leave on any peppers that I could. That's the Korean pepper in the back. I severely cut it back. It was a bush. It had um, just branches out all over. This is a cayenne. This is a cayenne. And then that is my... Chinese fly pepper in the back. This one also is just a complete mess. Like I had to keep the branches long because the um, peppers are at the end of it, but I would have liked to keep it shorter and 
to encourage it to regrow in a nice bushy shape like this just looks wild but what can you do and yeah we'll see if that fixed the problem and then for the next week, I checked on the plants every day, tried to see if there was any signs of aphids, didn't see any. The pepper plants in the farm especially uh, seemed to recover pretty well. None of the plants dropped their pepper fruit. None of the branches showed signs of dying off. Um, same thing with my countertop air gardens. The pepper plants there seemed okay. Uh, one of the positives of the bug infestation was that I had to deep clean all my gardens. Um, so everything just looked a lot neater. The Swiss chard was probably the group that was most affected. Um, soap is, is harmful to plants. It dries them out. And all of the chard got really limp and soft. Um, they were just flopping over. They, they didn't look too good. I gave all the plants just water, no nutrition. Um, I didn't really want them to focus on growing new leaves. I just wanted them to recover. And for the chard, I also tied them together to give them a bit of extra support. And then a full week later, um, they had also recovered but something strange did happen with the peppers. So I mentioned I had to prematurely harvest about 50 peppers, mostly Korean peppers and some cayennes. Um, and the day of, I had dunked all the peppers in a bowl of hot soapy water and submerged them for probably a good hour while I was deep cleaning the machines in each of the plants. Um, I then let them air dry and hoped that they would just mature from green to red on the counter. Um, and they did, but it was a little odd they, these are Korean peppers, they usually go from dark green to like a deep red color. Um, but these ended up turning kind of like neon, like a, like a quite bright yellow to a neon orange and then like a bright red instead of that dark glossy red. The other thing is a lot of them seem to really like shrivel up so if you can see it's like completely it just didn't dry the way a normal pepper would and i think that's because they're too immature like also maybe because they were submerged in the soapy water for so long like it's it's a bit like it's pruny like you know how your hands get pruny from being in like the pool um but yeah it's like weird and then this one this one has this weird i don't know if that's mold or what but yeah these are unfortunately going in the bin they just don't look right and i kind of i mean i could dry them and grind them into a powder and mix it with the others but i just don't think that's a good idea which is such a shame because it's like it's not like 50 peppers at least in here at least i still have the plant though yeah so i guess if you just really really want the bugs gone then i would do what i did where you individually soak every plant and the machine um in the in in hot soapy water and then obviously like clean your walls clean your baseboards clean the, the legs of the farm, um, just make sure you're removing them all. Oh, and that's one other thing. Um, you wanna try and make sure you kill them all, like 100% of them, because if you leave one, uh, they like a single one can lay 100 eggs every couple days. So it will very quickly become a problem again. Basically, just to recap everything, um, try to do what you can to prevent bugs in the first place. If you do get an aphid problem, you can use sprays. Um, sprays are probably the most gentle way to treat them because then you will most likely still have your plant at the end of the process. Um, but you want to fully soak the plant with the spray and do it every couple days, about every three days, um, so that you're killing all of the bugs that are fully grown, the babies, the and, and the full life cycle of the aphid or the white fly or whatever bug you have. Um, if you are like me and impatient and really can't stand the thought of bugs in your house, then um, take apart your machine, clean everything, and soak every single plant, the grow bowl, um, etc., in hot soapy water with dish soap. Oh, the third thing you can do is to release um, ladybugs <laughs> inside your house. Basically, ladybugs eat aphids. Um, they are like a natural predator for aphids. And if you really, really have a bad problem, like a recurring problem with aphids, then you can try buying ladybugs. You can buy them online. Um, I believe Etsy sells them. You basically release them in your home. They get to work eating all the aphids and then they fly away. Um, I did not do that because I couldn't wait. And also I didn't really want to solve bugs with more bugs, but uh, ladybugs are generally harmless. So that's an option. And yeah, I think that's everything I can share about bugs and aphids. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I hope you don't ever have to use these tips. All right, I'll see you in my next video.